What's up, Court Nerd? Time to get served. It's your boy, Phil. And today, I'm giving you a bonus clip of the Judge Middleton and Debbie Davis showdown. Our hero, Debbie Davis, gets scolded by our man, Judge Middleton. So sit back and enjoy. See you later, nerds. record and the prosecution's motion to adjourn. The case we are in is People versus Timothy Sean Bullock. The file number is 21384. Mr. Bullock is charged with the misdemeanor offense of committing a moving violation causing death. He is not present his lawyer, uh, Rhonda Ives, is present. Deborah Davis is here from the prosecuting attorney's office. This matter is set for jury trial tomorrow and Thursday, at least, if not beyond that, at about 1.30 this afternoon when I was in the middle of sobriety court staffing, I got uh, what's entitled a motion to adjourn trial signed by prosecuting attorney David Marvin. Um, I'll read the relevant parts. In this case, the autopsy of the deceased was performed at the Homer Stryker School of Medicine at Western Michigan University by Dr. Brandy Shattuck who travels interstate to perform professional services and currently working in Rochester, New York. The cost of getting Dr. Shaddock here to testify in person is approximately $8,000, which includes airfare, expert witnesses fee, rental vehicle, transportation, and hotel lodging. It is cost prohibitive to have Dr. Shaddock appear in person for trial. Prosecution requests an adjournment to determine a trial date when Dr. Shattuck has returned to the area so she can be available to testify without the needs for flights, rental cars, and hotel lodging. The defendant was never lodged on the warrant and was arraigned in the case and has been on PR bond for the entirety of the case. Where is it? There was an email from Rhonda. I don't see it in that email. Um, essentially saying, I don't have time to uh, address this. Um, and I object. Uh, we have our own expert coming at considerable expense, and we're ready to go to trial tomorrow. Um, Ms. Davis, what would you like the court to know? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this issue about the, uh, the cost and the trouble of getting Ms. Shattuck here was raised via email back on March 10th, 2023 to Ms. Ives, and it requested that she uh, speak with her client and see if there could be an agreement for Dr. Shattuck to appear via Zoom. Um, that was not responded to with an answer until I believe yesterday, uh, despite multiple conversations between uh, Ms. Ives and our office. Don't put this on her. Um, if you wanted this witness to be here, um, 
I would have known this before today. If she didn't, if you didn't have a stipulation in place for her, it was time to file a motion to either allow the witness to appear remotely or something else. But you're you're saying, well, she didn't get back to me, so I don't. I didn't know I was going to actually have to produce this witness. She didn't tell you you didn't have to produce the witness. Respectfully, Your Honor, um, there's not an option to file a motion to have her appear by Zoom. The case law has stated that uh, you have to have an agreement from not only the uh, defense attorney, but also the defendant themselves uh, in order to ask the court then to agree for this person to appear via Zoom. That's, that's what the court rule says, but there is discretion. Let's say, for example, the witness was overseas or they were in the military or they uh, were in the hospital. There are exceptions to that. But. Your Honor, there is not, and I had the case pulled up earlier, so I, could, I can look for it, but a case was reversed because a DNA analyst was not brought in in order for the confrontation clause and for the person to oh. confront that witness. I'm familiar with that case, um, and it was controversial. It wasn't an eyewitness. It wasn't uh, a race jest eyewitness. And so I am familiar with it, um, but we never, the time to address it isn't a half an hour before the end of the day, before the trial starts, but I'll let you finish your- Thank you, Your Honor. Position. In addition, last night we were emailed a proposed exhibit uh, of the Faro MSP scan that had been altered by the defense's expert. And so we have struggled today to be able to get that Dropbox uh, attachment to Sergeant Detective um, Brandon Davis from the Michigan State Police for him to review it to see if it's something that is, is going to be misleading or something that we need to object to the use of. Uh, we have not had that proposed exhibit uh, in the entirety of the case. I have no idea how long the defense has had it uh, because the report from Mr. Billington has been um, in our possession since September of 2022. So if this was something that was created as part of that, it was never disclosed to the prosecution. Well, did you file a demand for discovery from the defense? Yes, I believe it is um, standard for our office uh, to have the requirement. We also had a hearing over uh, this case and the discovery back in, I believe, September of 2022 because the defense had not uh, disclosed their expert paperwork. Um, so they then finally gave that to us. And we had uh, Sergeant Detective Brandon Davis review it. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. And obviously, from the, the pleadings, you can see that this is uh, four years worth of witness fees. And I understand the court's position um, regarding filing a motion. Uh, but again, we're operating under the belief that we were not permitted to file a motion. We did not know it was going to be as expensive as it is to get her back here from Rochester, New York. Regarding the defense having a witness coming in and flying in for this hearing, there was never any indication that her expert was from out of state or would need to be flying in. Uh, the only address that we have for the defense on curriculum vitae in the report is an email address and a phone number. Uh, we've never had a physical address for him, so I was not aware that he is from somewhere out of state. In addition, the report that he completed back in um, June 2022, and then we received in September of 2022, indicates that he did an actual field site inspection, uh, which would indicate that he was here in the St. Joseph County area or within at least a reasonable driving distance in order to do that. So we were not aware that uh, he was flying in from anywhere. Again, this is a, a court-appointed case. The taxpayers are footing the bill, unfortunately, for all of um, this that's going on. Um, so it, as far as the adjournment being requested at a, at a late time, requesting any sort of uh, reimbursement, um, it's something where the taxpayers are already paying for this expert. Uh, so I don't believe that reimbursement is going to be an issue. So we respectfully ask that the court uh, grant this adjournment. It's certainly not ideal. However, in the interest of justice and having this case um, be given its proper day in court, 
we would request that time to get our witness here to be able to review this new exhibit or evidence that the defense has emailed to us after hours last night and uh, be prepared to go forward. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, before I get to the issue that's at hand, I will um, address the demonstra demonstrative evidence that my expert put together. He just uh, used the data points that the MSP uh, officer had get, that we had provided that had been provided to us, and he put together a, a demonstrative uh, um, video using those data points and the camera pieces that were provided by the prosecutor's office um, so that he could use it during his testimony. It is not something we'd be asking to be admitted as evidence. Um, I, he just had completed it a couple days ago, and so I forwarded it to the prosecutor's office. It was our intention to use it because we do believe it'll, it'll kind of be a, a good um, a overview. Um, I think the, the expert will be able to testify to how we you uh, use the data to make the video. Um, ultimately, I, I think that's an evidentiary issue that the court is either going to let us use or not. Um, but I think it is more, um, it, it'll be probative to the issue at hand. I, I would, um, as to the motion, Your Honor, I'm, I'm actually, I, I need the court to know that last week when Ms. Davis was out of the office, Mr. Marvin had called me into his office to talk about this case. And I said, my client, you know, I said, I'm really sorry for this whole expert thing. My client, I can't waive my client's right to confront witnesses. That's my client's right. And he wants to confront his witnesses. And I thought the story, I thought it was just, we're done. He's, and Mr. Marvin had indicated that's okay. You know, Miss Miss Davis will figure it out. Monday morning, someone from her prosecutor, the Di Diana from the prosecutor's office, runs and finds me when I'm in the middle of I don't know what we have going on. I think it was in your court or Judge Pattison's court. And like we need to talk to you. Are you stipulating to the appearance of the medical examiner by Zoom? And I'm like, no, the witnesses have to be here. And I think we've been a little bit misled because during emails that were floating around. Last week, there was this idea that the prosecution was ready to proceed. As a matter of fact, on March 16th at 1.02 p.m., a letter, an email from Ms. Davis said, the prosecution is ready to proceed Wednesday morning. So my, my the defender's office that I work for um, submitted a $6,500 check to my expert on March 1st to cover his expert witness fees, his travel expense, his hotel expense. So from our end, we, and, and I was uh, bugging Mr. Stickley to make sure that got there. Cause I'm like, the judge has made it clear. We are not adjourning this. So if I have an, if I have an expert problem, you know, when we secured this date, I, I, I got the message loud and clear from your honor that I better secure with my expert, get back to me cause we're locking this date in. And so I went out of my way to secure my expert. My expert gave me his trial schedule and blocked this off. He does, he's, he's an expert in multiple cases, blocked off this time frame, gave me my schedule, even though I didn't get paid until the 1st of March. Um, and then and then I, Mr. Uh, Stickley, uh, they finally cut him a check uh, so that to secure his attendance. And then today, uh, when I got this email, Mr. Billington is already on a plane here. Um, and I, I mean, I, I don't know why the prosecutor would expect that they live locally. I mean, I, they're welcome to call him, talk to him about his report. I mean, he makes himself easily available. Um, the fact that this is a, prize, a surprise is baffling me. I knew their expert was from out of state a couple weeks ago. Um, so I, I, I feel like we're ready to go tomorrow, Your Honor. I'm ready to pick a jury. I'm prepared, Your Honor. And my client would like to have his day in court. Um, the, you know, that's where we are. Thank you.
I think if the court is going to grant the adjournment, then it should be on the condition that the prosecutor's office have to pay an additional $6,500 or whatever that cost is to make sure that my expert can be here for the next trial date. Well, it all comes out of the county's pocket. You're right. We'd had a pretrial conference where we had some hearings in November. In December, we were having difficulty finding a trial date. I had a, some a vacation in February and you had a trip and other people had a trip and you were all concerned about obtaining your experts and making sure they were available. And that day was December 6th. We set the matter for these March dates on December 6th. That was a long way out, longer than I wanted to go. So you guys could preserve and make sure your experts were available four months ago. I sent an email earlier this month that you referred to. Um, we've had two pretrials and pretrial motions. This is a very difficult case with procedural and evidentiary issues. I have blocked out two days for this trial. My fear is we are going to get caught up in last minute problems that could delay our start. We're gonna have 30 plus jurors here at 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning. We will have expert witnesses and video presentation issues. There will not be time for last minute discussions over evidence and instructions. I will have the instructions ready for your review when they've been prepared. This case has already been unduly delayed. As you know, it took months for the investigation to be completed. And then there was a one year delay between the time the charges were issued and then served on the defendant. We have had further delay in finding a place to put this trial. That is not fair to either family. I do not want to delay this case any further. We will be ready to go first thing Wednesday morning. And I was fearful of this exact same thing that we're dealing with. Ms. Davis then was gone out of state and unable to address these issues. Mr. Marvin was trying to figure out what was what. Um, Deborah responded trying to find that email that we'll be ready to go. Um, and that is accurate, Your Honor. We had received the contract for services from Dr. Shattuck. I had discussed it with Mr. Marvin that we were going to be able to pay for her services. And when I left town, it was my understanding we were good to go. Uh, we were still hopeful that uh, Ms. Ives and her client would agree to Zoom, but if not... Um, well, at what point did you realize she was in Rochester, New York? When she uh, got her subpoena, I believe it was two and a half weeks ago. All right. I reserved this date four months ago so you guys could line up your expert witnesses. Um, and so you're asking to adjourn this because you're saying it's too expensive to pay your doctor to come here. However, the county is paying $6,500 for her expert to be here tomorrow for naught. And you say, well, the county will reimburse that. So instead of having your expert here, we're paying her expert for, for an inconvenient trip and say, oh, so sorry. Um, so this is something that should have been known a long time ago, not the day before trial, not um, two and a half weeks before we're supposed to go. And before you leave on your trip, you say, oh, everything's fine. We're ready to go. We'll be there. And then you're gone and everything isn't fine. And um, here we are. Um, it's not fair to the defendant. 
and uh, um, we shouldn't be in this posture. Uh, and there's no indication that the witness is going to be here. Um, the motion says, the people of the state of Michigan request the jury trial to begin on Wednesday be adjourned to a date to be determined in order to arrange to have Dr. Shattuck appear in person as requested by the defendant. And you're right. There's a case that you're as well aware of as I am where it was reversed because an expert witness wasn't there. And you didn't make any provision to do that until two weeks ahead of time. And then you found out we have to have her here. So you move to adjourn. Does anyone have, when is Dr. Shattuck available? She's not the only expert here. We've got the state police expert. We've got her expert. Well, I may be back by here in August. Um, can, has anyone talked to Dr. Shattuck and say, when are you going to be in Kalamazoo? She works between Rochester, New York and the Chicago area. And so she would be available between these trips there is what my understanding is. Yeah, that's too vague. She might be here in July. And so this trial doesn't revolve around Dr. Shattuck. Uh, Rhonda's witness is very difficult to schedule and she scheduled it four months ago. You've got state police witnesses that are also in demand and there may be some other people. Um, so we asked to adjourn a, because it's too expensive, but by the way, we're willing to pay for her witness who isn't even going to testify and B, we don't know when, if ever she will be available. And it doesn't matter that it, that is three times your expense budget. You're not limited to what's in your expense budget. A, it probably should be increased. But B, well, sorry, we can't afford to charge this person with a crime because we don't have enough money to do it. You have enough money to do it. You just have to ask for a reimbursement or you have to move some money. Uh, the Indigenous Defense Fund, she went through the channels and got approval for her expert. Um, so it's weak for all the reasons I stated. A, it's too late. B, there wasn't adequate preparation. Um, and the fact that you didn't know her witness was not local, it's because you never talked to them. Um, and, but it doesn't, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that your witness had to fly in. Sorry, that's not a reason to adjourn it. Um, it's embarrassing and I feel bad for uh, the families of the deceased and for the defendant, Mr. Bullock, who isn't here. The motion to adjourn is denied. Um, you represented to the court and counsel before you left on your trip that you were ready to go and everything was ready to be prepared. I was concerned about this exact same thing. We've got a bunch of exhibits. You haven't finished sharing the exhibits. There's no demand for discovery from the prosecutor. One of the court orders says the discovery is closed. Um, and I don't know when, if ever, this person will be here. At, and, and it isn't her unavailability, bill of unavailability, it's the expense. And it's the expense of the taxpayers, which now we're spending $6,000 for naught. So the motion to adjourn is denied. And uh, you can discuss this with Mr. Marvin and see how you wish to proceed. Mr. Marvin has already decided we'll be dismissing this without prejudice when we can refile. That's on the prosecutor's office. And you should um, feel bad about that. All right, uh, the prosecutor is represented. They're going to be dismissing the matter. Then I guess the question will be whether it be prejudice or without prejudice. And we'll just argue that at a later date. Uh, the prosecutor will be dismissing this case because their last minute motion to adjourn is denied. And we'll address that at that time. But I will release the jurors that are scheduled to be here tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. All right, we're in recess. Thank you. To be clear, I was ready.